Latest research shows one in seven women in the UK have considered or are considering breast enhancement surgery. Figures released in February by the British Association of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons showed a 13% rise on the previous year of women undergoing breast implant operations. The Body Matters panel, launched by GC Aesthetics, who make Nagor implants, is committed to giving women information, support and advice before they embark on the physical and sometimes emotional journey of surgery. I'm delighted to say that two of the panel are joining us today Today, we have Jackie Lewis, one of the country's top aesthetic and reconstructive plastic surgeons, and Norman Wright, a psychotherapist with a wealth of experience supporting the psychological well being of patients pre and post surgery. A very warm welcome to both of you. We'll also be bringing you an interview with Aisha Kojak later in the show. And Aisha is the CEO of GC Aesthetics and the only female CEO of a breast implant manufacturer. So Jackie, it's been 50 years since the first boob job, if I can say boob job, 1963. And we know that attitudes have come a long way, but how has the procedure itself changed? Vicky, it used to be scary what uh, women were offered 50 years ago. They would be offered injection of free substances into the breast, not just implants. I have seen patients who have had free silicone injections into the breast, free paraffin injections, free gel injections. Invariably, they become lumpy, and it's really difficult to distinguish um, a lump from a breast cancer. So now um, we use implants, and um, the two fillers that we use are silicone gel, mm -hmm. medical grade, or saline, which is salty water, and indeed, even in the last two decades, we used to use um, soya bean oil implants or gel implants, and they were withdrawn from the market. So silicone and saline nowadays. Well, thank goodness things have moved on in that way. Um, let's talk about people's attitudes. Norman, what type of changes in attitude have we seen amongst women and society as a whole towards breast enhancement surgery? Well, there's been a, quite a few different changes. I think the um, um, Jackie's just been talking about how things used to be and I think one of the things about um, uh, breast implants and procedures generally is that they've become safer um, which has helped towards uh, people's attitudes uh, changing and um, also it's much more accessible than it used to be mm. um, and people are talking about it much more. You mentioned that before it was something perhaps that just felt slightly out of our reach and now yes. it's becoming more commonplace that actually if we want it we can go out there and, and mm. get it done. Mm. And it's much more affordable. And much more, more affordable. affordable. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Norman, what about current attitudes? Is it coming from a place where women feel they need to build their confidence or is it simply they want to enhance their bus size? I think most definitely, I think it's, it's much more related to self-esteem and yeah. uh, self-confidence and women basically want to feel a bit more, feel better about themselves, you know, particularly after, um, uh, so after having children as an example yeah. or after, you know, uh, maybe being on a diet or having uh, all, all the procedures in terms of like that are connected to weight loss. Um, so there's lots of different reasons why uh, women might now be considering mm -hmm. um, uh, a breast implants and it's not necessarily related to sort of, you know, the sort of the glamour side and mm -hmm. sort of wanting to look like Pamela Anderson or anything like that. It's more, much more connected to women basically wanting to look and uh, feel better about themselves and in themselves. Yeah. Time now to hear from Aisha Kochak, who is the CEO of GC Aesthetics and the only female CEO of a breast implant manufacturer. So we had a little chat with her to see what sort of changes she's experienced in the attitudes towards breast enhancement surgery and the hopes she has for the Body Matters panel. decided to start the Body Matters panel because the decision to have cosmetic surgery is not only a physical journey but it's also an emotional journey. So we would like to make sure that women get as much information as possible before making this very important decision. We also would like to make this a more open discussion so that women feel confident enough to seek for the information from professionals, from their friends, from their families and at the end, make the best decision for themselves. So in a way, we think that this is empowering women. We hope that Body Matters panel will help to support women being fully informed 
and confident uh, not only before but also after their surgeries. We have recently conducted a, a research looking at the attitudes uh, towards breast augmentation in UK. And we found out the number of women who are considering breast augmentation have increased. So one out of every seven women either have considered are considering having breast augmentation. So that's one change. And the second part is the motivation uh, to have breast augmentation have changed. It is not about size, but it's more about confidence now. So women, after having uh, babies, after losing weight or other body confidence issues, are more considering having breast augmentations. As a woman who recently had a baby, I understand and relate to all these reasons why you would consider uh, having breast augmentation. Absolutely, attitudes have changed. Uh, we hear more about it now, it's more in the media. However, I still think that it is a taboo subject. In our research, 7 out of 10 women still considered this as a taboo subject. So therefore, we are still reluctant to talk about this openly and discuss it with our friends, discuss it with our family. And this leaves women in isolation prior to making such an important decision. This is where the panel comes in. We have brought together a number of experts to help women, support them to be informed for this very important decision. The panel will address questions as how to find the best surgeon, what's the right procedure for you, and many other uh, areas around it, so that women don't feel they're isolated and they don't have the full information to make this very important decision. Breast surgeries are on the rise in UK and around the world. More and more real women are considering it. It's less about attention-seeking and appearance and it's more about gaining confidence. It's not for everybody, but for women who are considering it, we are here to support them in their journey to make this decision and also after they have their surgery. Hit the nail on the head, I'd say. Real women, that's mm -hmm. what it's all about. It used to, many moons ago, feel like it was something that we'd flick through the newspaper and see, but actually, yeah, yeah. it's about getting us real women that bit of confidence back and getting mm -hmm. the look that we want when we mm -hmm. wear our clothes, isn't indeed, it? Indeed. Can we talk a bit more about, say, the initial consultation, people mm -hmm. come to see you, and perhaps the aftercare. Mm -hmm. Would you put as much emphasis and importance on that as you would the procedure itself? Absolutely. I think it's important that women uh, have a, an opportunity to prepare emotionally and relationally and psychologically in ERP terms if you will for their procedure uh, pre and post um, pre and post that procedure particularly around the aftercare because I think that's where um, where women have an opportunity to sort of, if you like, explore what it is mm. and see how, how closely the experience that they've had matches what it is the idea that they had at the beginning of the procedure. So I think yes, because I wonder if that always does match up. I mean, imagine now when you're talking and walking someone through, almost mm. holding their hand through each step, because mm. it could be something actually if it's a confidence issue, it mm. might not be the right track for them to take. And would you explore that with them? Absolutely, uh, yes. Just, just as I say, um, the the PAPS initiative that I've that I've created um, was about pre and post procedure support. Is that that's what it's designed to do? Is to get women to really think through again the positives as well as the potential um, risk issues, if you like, that might be associated, or, or um, how it might impact upon the sort of relationships, how it might impact upon the support that they may need, particularly as I say, post mm -hmm. procedure. What it is that they might be actually needing, you know, in terms of friends and family and also just to ensure that the healing process goes well you know yeah. and, it, and it's also, also about managing their expectations of the procedure yeah fantastic mm. Jackie um first-hand experience the women that you're you're meeting and coming across and helping are you finding that the views and when you have a conversation with them they're they're quite different to perhaps the conversations you would have had years ago well Vicky um, I see women from all ages and all walks of life teenagers to women in their 60s coming to ask me for breast augmentation and the overriding theme is that they want to feel better about their own body image mm. and you picked on something really important about having them match their expectations yeah. to what can be achieved mm, mm, mm. yeah that's quite important. i would say that's 
Well, for me, just as an onlooker, I'm not a professional like you do, I would say that's got to be top of the list because it's not going to fix everything. It's not necessarily, mm. as we were saying, the answer mm. in, all, in all the cases. Sure. But that's what you would explore together. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And, you know, and very, I, I, I think that it, uh, and it has been for, in, from my experience, it's probably integrated as, as part of the initial consultations yeah. as well for, with with, um, with patients as well. It's quite Very important. Very much so, matching expectations. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Mm. And actually about preparing them for the journey as well that they're yes. going to be embarking on. Yeah. Mm. We've got a question here from Suzanne. Thank you very much, Suzanne. And Suzanne says, I had a breast reduction in my early 20s and pregnancy mm. in my mid-30s has caused sagging and lack of fullness in my breasts. I'm usually a 34 double D. Would implants restore the firmness and shape to my breasts? Jackie, do you want to take that one? Very good question. And she'd need to be assessed by an experienced um, breast plastic surgeon because it all depends on the amount of tissue that's mm -hmm. left behind in relation to the envelope and, th and the position of that tissue on the chest wall and the height of her nipples. So really, we'd need her to see a surgeon. To see, okay. And um, would you say you see quite a few women in that, in that situation, like myself, mid-30s, had the baby? Mm -hmm. A lot of women, yeah. because we're all growing old, we're losing elasticity of the skin, yeah. and um, gravity is um, not, not our best friend. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I see a lot of women in that situation. Yeah. But there's help out there, which is good. Uh, this one from Fiona. Thanks, Fiona. She says, I've recently had breast implants going from a flat-chested A cup to a D cup. I'm getting loads of attention from men and jealous from jealousy from women, and mm. I don't know how to cope with it with all that. I think that's a real shame. Mm, mm, mm. And again, one of the things that I explore through the, the uh, PAPS initi uh, initiative and the PAPS support is to get women to think about the not so much the implications but what it might mean for those key relationships sometimes about because of the change that may will, that will occur uh, after uh, post procedure and how get them to imagine how people might respond to them because sometimes yeah. it can be a bit of a shock to as an example have people no longer looking into your eyes anymore mm. but rather looking somewhere else and also it, it can you know when you're looking beautiful um, it can bring on a lot of envy and sometimes yeah. we're not necessarily prepared for that you know and yeah. it's just something to just to consider to think about how it affects your relationships because that can then go on to affect the way that you might feel about yourself your self-esteem yeah. and self-concept so it's good to just to give that some consideration just to think about and feel about how things might be post-procedure just to imagine how people might respond to you and yeah. relate to you after your procedure. So maybe get some psychological mm. help from someone like Norman. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And I would suggest, as a non-professional, don't hang around with those awful women. Absolutely. <laughs> Our sisters absolutely. have to stick absolutely. together for goodness sake. Yes, they should yes, be happy yes, for you. Yes. Um, you can't really say that though, can you? No, I but, but, say that. but you know, but maybe that's one of the things that they may need to consider is that you know, you know, you, you uh, very often women need, and not people just generally need people around them that are going to be supportive of yes. them and the, in their choice that they've made, yeah. and to be encouraging of them and to enjoy them, you know, enjoying themselves and being happy. In their new confidence. Absolutely, then, yeah. yes, absolutely. 100%. This one from Emma then, thank you Emma. Emma says, my partner is against me having implants. Mm. After losing three stone, it's causing some real stress in our relationship. How can I get him to understand? I would say this mm. is probably quite a common mm. one really. I think sometimes partners find it hard if someone's gone from being a certain size and they all of a sudden decrease and I, they have this new confidence, they get worried they're gonna be left behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, you know, that's one of the things that is, uh, I can imagine, is, is a challenge for a lot of women. It's about how they how they balance, if you like, mm. what it is that they are feel as though they're needing, rather than dealing with the needs of others. It might sound a bit harsh, but actually it's... It's the woman that, uh, is it Emma, did you say her name? Yes, Emma, yeah. yes. It's her body, if that makes sense, yeah. and, it, and she has to feel good about herself. So I would mm. encourage her to maybe spend some time with her partner explaining to him about the reasons why it's important to her, the, the reasons why she's considering the uh, um, uh, breast implants or considering this a procedure, why it's important to her, because it's not about it's not threatening the relationship particularly, it's something that's going to enable her to feel good about herself, you know. Yeah, I have something to say as well, mm. and um, perhaps she should explore the fear of her partner yeah, for yeah. her going through that procedure okay. because yes. it is under a general anaesthetic mm. and he may actually be concerned about sure. 
unwanted adverse effects, effects. from the yeah. surgery. Absolutely. So just from a partner for, of someone who's had surgery, there are anxieties as well. Absolutely. So these things, I think, should be explored, Ex explored. as well. Absolutely. But certainly, mm. um, I can understand the self-esteem thing, Emma. Yes, so if yes, you really yes. feel strongly about it, perhaps um, talk to a surgeon with yeah. your partner to explain the um, adverse effects mm. and also to bring out in the consultation how much it means to you yeah. to have mm. that sort of surgery. Mm -hmm. Get and to the up. root of the yes. issue. Why is he, what is he worried about exactly. Exactly. exactly? Let's see if we can work mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. that. Because I imagine actually having the support of your partner and your family is essential. Is vital. Absolutely. Absolutely, it's vital. absolutely vital. essential. And also having the support uh, of your partner post-procedure is also, uh, pre and post-procedure, um, is, is also vital because what uh, any woman would be wanting at that time, because it's, you know it's a it's a big procedure to be mm. having, is the support of yeah. your partner, not necessarily to feel as though that you're having to worry about what it is that your partner might be thinking about, yeah. you know what I mean, or if they have yeah. some concerns around that aesthetic. So I would agree Certainly, with you. Certainly, or yeah. have it out in the open. But absolutely, to talk about yeah. what the real issues are, you yeah. know, on Definitely. both sides. Yeah. Definitely. Mm. Jackie, can we talk about the actual procedure, the process? So what would happen from point A to point B? Well, if someone um, wanted surgery, um, breast augmentation, I'd normally say do as much research as, as um, you can about the procedure, and there's a whole wealth of information on the internet. Also, um, there's a whole wealth of in information on the British Association of Plastic Surgeons website. But also, perhaps talk to um, your general practitioner because they will have first hand um, experience of their other patients, perhaps having had the procedure and may be able to recommend a surgeon. Um, there's a list of accredited surgeons on the BAAPS website that I mentioned. But also, coming to a consultation to have um, a whole load of questions that you want answered to address to the surgeon. Make sure that um, you get on with the surgeon mm. and if you're not happy and you feel that your expectations might not be met, get a second opinion and take things from there. This is a decision for a lifetime. It's not a one-off. As they say, a dog isn't just for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Boobs mm. aren't just a one-off thing. You may require further surgery down the line and you need to have the support of your friends, mm -hmm. family, perhaps mm -hmm. even have psychological help mm -hmm. in order to take you through this journey. Mm -hmm. And if you were to meet with someone, would you would you pinpoint that actually they could they could benefit from talking to a psychotherapist? Would you advise them, point them towards someone I'd like certainly, Norman? I'd certainly ask them what sort of expectations they had and if they weren't clear and if I felt they'd benefit from someone like Norman, mm -hmm. I'd certainly recommend it. Okay. And at what stage of the process would that happen, Norman? When would I be you. Well, hopefully, again, pre, uh, definitely before the procedure. Mm -hmm. um, again, just to sort of explore what is, your, again, what your expectations expectations might be of the procedure, um, uh, um, what kind of support you've got in place, mm -hmm. and for you just to consider um, how you imagine um, you might be feeling and thinking after the procedure, and also a little bit about exploring a, a little bit about how you're thinking and feeling about yourself mm. before the procedure, right now, in, as we're talking. Um, again, just to get um, um, uh, patients to think about and to establish and to be clear in their own mind why it is that they're having the procedure and, all, and then thought through some of the implications and also to maybe discuss some of those things that may have already discussed in the consultation as well. Definitely before the procedure because mm. you, you might need to see them several times. Times, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Just to make sure that again that they are secure in their own mind mm -hmm. about their reasons and their rationale for having the procedure, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, and and to, feel, to be feeling comfortable and that they're in the right place, again, psychologically, emotionally and relationally, to have that procedure, mm -hmm. to have the procedure of their choice, actually. So okay. it's not about necessarily talking people out of it. I fully it's agree It's just about with preparation. You. Mm. Preparation, yep. absolutely, is key. Yes. Rachel, thank you very much for your question. Um, Rachel says, I've been considering surgery as my breasts are quite uneven and it really gets me down, but I don't know who I should talk to first. Should I go to my GP or perhaps a private surgeon? GP. GP. GP mm. would be able to direct her to either an NHS um, consultant breast or plastic surgeon because some of these um, asymmetries or imbalances can be corrected on by surgery on the NHS. Mm. Okay, great. I mm. hope that helps. Mm. Um, so we're here to talk about the Body Matters panel. Norma, let's start with you. Um, what are you hoping to achieve with this? What are we hoping to see? Well, um, I'm hoping to be able to promote 
um, uh, uh, health, uh, positive health uh, um, issues around sort of uh, 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 breast implants, mm -hmm. um, and to inform and to educate uh, people that are considering having them, and also to be able to provide some support for them, or for them to get to consider. Uh, first of all, the support that they actually might need, but also for them in their sort of selection and in the choosing of uh, surgeons and and and, and cosmetic, uh, uh, sorry, nurses that are involved in the industry, to make sure that they are choosing from a from a group of people, if you like, uh, that have their best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. If that means that, that see the person behind the patient, and that's one of the things that I've been developing through PAPS accreditation is uh, an industry body whereby you know again uh, surgeons and clinicians and, and cosmetic nurses will be sort of it's a place where they can where the general public can go, where women can go and sort of seek out and sort of see what kind of people are out there that are of a particular interest and a particular view about. Are basically putting the person behind, uh, recognising the person behind the patient and recognising the emotional, relational and psychological impacts of any procedure that might, that, uh, are for women. So it's an opportunity for them to, again, make, make informed choices and, um, and, and for them to select, if you like, uh, people that they feel comfortable with. So I would mm. agree with what we said, Jackie, about sort of it's important that people feel comfortable with the people that they are choosing to perform, perform uh, uh, breast implants for them. So the practical side of things, mm. giving them all the information mm. they need and giving them the tools to make the good decisions, Absolutely. but also carrying them through that emotional Absolutely. journey. Jackie, yes. how about you? What are you hoping to achieve with this? Oh, I'd like women to be fully informed mm. about yeah. the whole procedure, knowing what can go wrong, what to expect from the surgery, and in order for them to have their expectations met, to have done a lot of um, research and, and perhaps seen one or two or even more surgeons. Um, what we want is a happy person at the end of this procedure mm, and for mm. them to be happy for the rest of their time. Mm, mm. Because, I mean, a lot of women will or will want, uh, will need or want to have a further operation after breastfeeding, after um, childbirth. Um, just growing old, they might need their um, implants exchanged, they might need a breast uplift, so to factor into their decision that um, it's a long-term commitment. Mm, mm. But you want a happy person at a the end of it, and I think that's a lovely note to end it on. Thank mm. you to you both. We are almost at the end of the show. My thanks to Jackie Lewis and Norman Wright for joining us today. And if you're considering breast enhancement surgery, visit gcaesthetics.com for further advice and information, and take a look at their Facebook page, and that's Nagel Global, and you'll see the details on the screen for more insight from Jackie and Norman. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.